You're listening to Canada's Getting Colder, a joint perspective on Canadian hip-hop culture. Let's take a look at arts and culture. Quiet as it's kept, hip-hop has had an influence on Canadian culture far beyond music. From arts, dance, fashion, and spoken word, these elements have birthed initiatives that speak to the very hearts of our youth cores and broader communities. It has also reached far beyond our metropolitan centers to rural regions as well. Our next panelists contribute to the community in their own unique ways, sharing a message with all that fall in reach and often flaunts an urban twist. In studio, we have from left to right, in studio, entrepreneur, author, leading national poet, a.k.a. Mr. Black History himself, Dwayne Morgan, in the building. As well, we have Theology 3, one of the fan... We have Theology 3, noted rapper, decorated community worker, and highly decorated collaborative artist, who fathered uh, recently the acclaimed album release featuring no features, which is available online at theology3.com. How you guys doing this morning, or this evening? Very good, man, very good. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, although the focus of the episode is Canadian hip-hop, we felt it relevant to take a look at the various art forms and dissect the influence that hip-hop has had on those various genres. So, um, we had some posted questions that we talked about in the, in the other room and we want to talk about here online right now. Um, and I guess we can start off by talking about how has Canadian hip-hop, for lack of a better term, manifested itself in the expression of your art forms? And we'll start with Dwayne and then we'll go over to Theo. Um, you know what, I think it's really interesting because it's almost, uh, to me it's almost the other way around when you look at spoken word and, and hip-hop because spoken word has existed before hip-hop. So when you look at, you know, Gil Scott here in The Lost Poets, this is where, you know, a lot of that root is where hip-hop kind of came from, that social activism, that, um, you know, political sensibility and that sort of thing. So. Um, uh, when you look at uh, people like, say, you know, Kamau or Socrates, these are people who I know their parents from the poetry world because their their parents are into literature and stuff, and now their offspring are into hip hop. So it's like just a generational move from that, you know, you know, kind of page poetry to the stage hip hop culture, that sort of thing. So it's really been, uh, you know, a very closely knit thing between spoken word and hip hop. But I mean, I always like to make sure that people know that spoken word existed before the hip hop and has probably informed hip hop more so than Canadian hip hop has informed spoken word. Definitely, theology three. Canadian hip hop. How has it how has it manifested itself um, in the work that you do and beyond the music? Because obviously, as an artist, it's 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 so apparent. But even even your work in the community. Well, we live in Toronto, so it's hard to escape it. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's influences lay out, you know, across the whole city. Of, uh, every template you can think of, hip hop has touched. So, and we have a genuine history that we really um, have to acknowledge. Um, you know, I could I could go back to artists like I don't even know, like ones I used to watch on Rap City when when it actually had some kind of host. So, and, and those are. To, to acknowledge that you have an actual history that you can go back to and there's a way of hip-hop that was processed where we live that was you know directly reflective of our community it's interesting to go back to that and of course I took things from that growing up where I grew up around Vaughn Road it was all around me you know and um, it just influenced everything you do so Canadian hip-hop man it, it's a huge thing and, and in Toronto I, I'd like to think we have we have quite a, a stake in that as well so. Now, obviously, the both of you have um, vested interest in the urban culture as entrepreneurs and contributors to the to the craft. But beyond your connection to to hip hop, how do how do you feel the aspect of Canadian hip hop um, resonates with your audiences? Do you feel that um, there is a, there is a connection with your audiences when you're reaching out to them through your mediums, or is it still something that needs to be tempered? Um, I mean, there's there's definitely a connection because the the hip hop scene in Toronto at least isn't that big uh, in the sense where 
people don't feel like they have a direct connection to the artist. It's almost like the artists you hear, you can just almost go anywhere and see them. They're, they're still tangible, whereas, you know, other cities you might go to, you could travel to the States and stuff, you have, you know, artists that are just so far gone that you can't even, you know, it'd be, Drake is our closest example to somebody who might be that far out that you're not just going to run into him at the mall or whatever, but for the most part, everybody else is still pretty much kind of around, right? So I think just having people still that close, it's very much a part of, of what we do and, and, and the culture of, of just being in Toronto because everything is just kind of right there. You just kind of go out, you know, in the club district and you might run into Cardi or, or whoever because everybody's still very, very local and they still hold that, that localness. Even if they've uh, attained a certain amount of success outside of, you know, the local boundaries, they're still very, you know, local um, in terms of a lot of their efforts and, and where you can actually find them and, and connect with them. Sounds good. Do you want to turn it I agree with that still. I mean, the only thing is when, when you try to expand your fan base, you see how limited people's scope of Canadian hip hop is. That's like, there's only a few people presented, and it's not even um, a Toronto thing. It's, it's just all over the country. It's like there's about four or five people presented, and it's funny because those are the people are the people that will will be called upon to do corporate engagements and. Um, sponsorship things which do exist which is a good thing too in Canada but it's funny um, we have such a job on educating people about the whole realm of Canadian hip hop and getting a lot more people paid off it as well so, I love this door opening it just shows you that it's a crunk event it's a good manifest it's definitely one of those things um, right now in studio we have uh, Dwayne Morgan and LJ3 speaking about arts and culture and breaking down the influence of Canadian hip-hop culture on those different art forms. Now, when we look at hip-hop, a lot of people tend to um, shy away from the realities of what hip-hop is, the fact that it is based in black culture and things of that nature. Um, when reaching out to your audiences with your art forms or your mediums, I, I, mentioned it, I mentioned it before, but do you ever feel like there's a need to temper the, the delivery of that message based on the fact that some people do want to make money off it, like Theo was talking about, that do, some people do want to go corporate with the work that they're doing. And at this stage, there's still, a, there's still an oddity around how people consume Canadian hip hop. So when you're delivering your, when you're delivering your mediums, and I'll leave that to the both of you, is there, is there an opportunity where you think you need to temper it? Or do you feel like your audiences are, are cool with what hip hop is? Um, I would say that my audience is um, cool with what hip hop is. I think, um, you know, in the poetry world, a lot of the people are, you know, very tolerant. A lot of the people, you know, have um, just think outside of the box, which is kind of why they're into poetry in the first place. So I, I never find a need to temper anything. Um, you know, I never try to say, well, hip hop is urban music or whatever. Hip hop is black music. Uh, people have always consumed black music, uh, whether it be rock and roll, whether it be gospel, whatever the case may be. So I don't feel as though now there's a reason for me to say it's something other than what it is. This is what it is. And North America has a long history of consuming everything black, including the actual people. Um, and so there's no reason now to, to begin changing that. Now is the time to just embrace something that came out of our community, came out of struggle and say, this is what it is. Other people have embraced it. Um, we haven't been exclusionary where we say, oh, because you're this race or that race, you can't participate in it. Everybody can participate in it. It's bigger than just who created it. And I think that's the important part that people need to recognize. Mm -hmm. Just working with the youth, it is kind of tough because they have this something that is pushed in their face as as even something that that they've created and they've done so breaking that down for them and showing them uh, some of the different aspects of hip-hop culture is kind of challenging like because we all work in youth programs I'm sure Dwayne has done it too mm -hmm. and, and I work in a program called Beats to the Streets out of Centennial College and it's kind of uh, interesting just to to show them that they are empowered as far as they decide what imagery of them is put out there, especially when creating their own songs and compositions, right? So that's what hip-hop is all about. It's really about self-definition. So once you give them that uh, strength, then they, they can roll with it properly. So so loving to hear the fact that um, it, it is resonating with your, with your audiences. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the, the evolution of hip-hop from mid-80s to where we are now, one of the things that I'm always interested in, especially with the arts and culture, is the fact that as entrepreneurs, 
you guys are always faced with trying to find new venues, trying to find ways to get that message out there because there isn't necessarily a mainstream medium mm -hmm. to, to be used. Based on the delivery of your arts and your mediums, how has the consumption of your work evolved over the years in terms of your working relationships with the audiences that you sell tickets to and even further, the businesses that give you access to the venues and things of that nature? Anybody can speak to those experiences? Um, I mean